if they grant the stay, then we would operate our junior and senior high school program exactly the same way it was operated in 7071. There would be no busing, there would be no changes in the zone lines. Every junior and senior high school student, some 70,000, would attend the same school in the 71 72 school year that they attended in 70 71. And you're asking only for a, a delay, for a brief delay until you can uh, uh, accumulate enough transportation, is this correct? That's right. Now, if uh, Judge Taylor denies that stay, what will happen then? Well, we'll have to cross that bridge when we come to it. Monday morning, the new desegregation plan for Fort Worth schools will get its first test. This school, West Hanley Elementary, and others involved in the cluster plan, will not have a second grade. Second graders here will now go to Rosedale Park Elementary, approximately a half mile away to the south. At 7.30 Monday morning, the school buses will begin to roll. Thirteen new buses will be used as free transportation for the children involved in the cluster school plan. The Citizens for Neighborhood Schools who opposed the plan, had called for a citywide boycott of schools Monday. But this morning, newly elected president of the Citizens Group, Jay Mert, said the citywide boycott would not be in the best interest of education for Fort Worth children. However, Mert said the citizens still advocate a boycott by children who will be bused. I asked him what that would accomplish other than disrupt school classes. Our country was founded on the breaking or uh, the ignoring of unjust laws. Uh, definitely this is an unjust law. The majority of the people feel this. Uh, this uh, means somewhere down the line an individual must have some form of recourse. Uh, at this particular point, our government, uh, uh, our Supreme Court, our school administration has given us no recourse. There is no e legal action that the people of Fort Worth can take. Hundreds of mothers in the affected areas have asked us to take physical action to literally stop the buses by standing in front of them, to let air out of their tires and other actions. We are telling you all these things so that you will understand that we have been a moderating influence in some of the more radical groups in this community. If administrative personnel continue to castigate us as radicals and racists, to discredit our organization, radical groups will take over as leaders in the fight against busing. Then advocates of physical intervention will give administrators and all citizens of Fort Worth something to really work on. The Citizens for our Neighborhood Schools contend that the mental strain, possible physical harm, and other disadvantages of busing outweigh the educational advantages of the cluster plan. So the buses purchased just last month by the school district may see little wear and tear. The main question, though, is if a boycott of any major proportion is prolonged, will the effect be detrimental to public elementary education in Fort Worth? Jim Green, Channel 8 News on the Move, Fort Worth.
These results come from tests given at the end of the last school year to senior students across the state. The Texas Education Agency tested some 70,000 senior students in 306 school districts on four subjects, English, mathematics, social science, and natural science. The results released today showed the system quite a bit above the state average. School Superintendent Julius Trulson said that normally large cities are below the state average because of the large amount and diversity of socioeconomic levels. I asked Trulson what these test results would mean to the average student. Well, it means that our boys and girls are, in our high schools are getting a good educational program. The experiences they're having are being productive and they can expect when they get to college, if they go to college, they can make as good or better grades in college than they've made in high school, and they can be successful there. What do you attribute the success of besting the state average to? I attribute this to our very fine teachers, of their attitude. I think in this, this trials and tribulation we're having currently, and the way they're facing these, and the definite planning, and the types of program being developed by our administrators, and our principals, and our teachers, I think they're bearing fruit, and I think this is a good time for them to know it. Trilson said there was one other significant factor brought out by the test results. That was the fact that, again, away from past experience, this time the boys scored higher overall than did the girls. The women did, however, top their male counterparts in English. Jerry Park, Channel 8 News on the Move, Fort Worth. One reason why we are picking in uh, uh, the director is because he can't be reached when he's needed. Uh, we have some people that have been downhill and, and needed his help, and he was elsewhere. I understand that he spent some one hour and 45 minutes since he's been elected uh, director of Dallas Legal Services. And if he's not coming in to help the poor, well, then we don't need it. Mrs. Gilbert, how long do you expect to keep the picket line down here? As long as necessary. As long as it's necessary. Uh, I, you can quote me if you want to, but I'll tell you this one thing. We're going to sleep on the street uh, Sunday night, and we'll be here when James Hammonds get here Monday morning. When you say as long as necessary, do you mean until Mr. Hammond comes in and stays in his office, or do you mean until a new director is placed here at Dallas Legal Services? I mean both. I mean until Mr. Hammonds comes in his office and roll up his sleeves and go to work. And the main thing we're concerned about is getting someone in who will represent the people. Mrs. Gilbert, I noticed you have a couple of observers from uh, the ACLU. Are you expecting some problems during this protest? No, we're not uh, expecting any problems, but I always like to be on the safe side. If any problems arise, we'll be, have somebody here to, to uh, answer to them or give an account of it. I'd say the facts are not all in on that. Uh, I'd, I'd say that it'd be time to wait until the investigation is completed. Uh, there are several in investigations underway, and uh, I've made it clear, I think, that uh, I think we are going to have to have new leadership in this state. looking for some very strong opposition, that's for sure. <laughs> when you open with Texas El Paso and then TCU and Toledo, which now has the longest major college wing street going, uh, and Bowling Green and West Texas State and New Mexico State, out of conference, and then of course we've got all our regular conference foes to play, uh, 
Uh, we're looking for a very tough season. We certainly are. Hey, will this season be any tougher now that you're a major college? Well, yes, it will be tougher because, uh, again, we're playing six major schools, which uh, this is the first year they've had that many on, on the schedule, and uh, it makes our work a little bit uh, more difficult. However, I think that we're in a, in a situation that we certainly can uh, hold our own uh, w even this first year because I think some will take us a little light, uh, uh, some will slip up on, and, and some will out condition and all that sort of stuff. So uh, we're not taking a back seat to our schedule. Uh, we're facing it game by game, and we feel that we can get out there and, and compete with them, and we're going to do so. Well, this is your first year as head coach uh, at UTA. Do you have any things new you're going to put into operation? Well, uh, for UTA, yes, it will be new because uh, the offense is completely different than what they've used here in the past. Uh, our defenses uh, will not change on the surface that much, but there, there will be some differences there. But we run out of a, a pro attack, a pro set, uh, very similar to what you saw on television last night, and uh, we'll, we'll move the football. On August 9th, the Fort Worth City Council was presented with a request in their pre-council meeting to allow the controversial musical to be staged here in the Will Rogers Auditorium in December and January. The council turned the request down. Southeastern Promotions Incorporated has asked federal judge Leo Brewster to force the council to lift that ban and to refrain from interfering with the performance. When the council was presented with the request to stage Hare, the most vocal opponent was Councilman John J. O'Neill. I felt that the play here that I saw in San Francisco was full of smut, four-letter words uh, that I wouldn't want to repeat. And as much as anything, the more or less uh, degrading of uh, our system, our church, our patriotic views of our country, and I merely made the statement that I was opposed to it, and the council apparently agreed with me. Uh, obviously, we're not a censorship board, and we shouldn't be, and what legal impl implications this may bring about, I don't know. That's up to the legal staff to see. Will Rogers' manager, B. Don Magnus, had asked the council if they would allow the booking of the show if the company cut out the one nude scene in the play. The answer was still no. Southeastern Promotions claims that the city has no right to forbid the presentation of hair since it is, they claim, not obscene under current court definitions and has definite redeeming value. Regardless of the outcome of the case, it's possible that the judge will grant a restraining order to forbid the city to use the auditorium for any other purpose during the four weeks in question this winter. A lengthy court battle, even if settled in favor of the city, could prevent the booking of anything else into the auditorium, thus causing Fort Worth to possibly lose badly needed revenue. So it looks like the city's going to be hard-pressed to come out ahead on the deal. Jay Lewis, Channel 8 News on the Move, Fort Worth. General, you're saying that the Senate can put you, the small businessman, the ambulance operator, out of business. Why do you feel this way? Well, the Senate can put us out of business. This particular bill here, Senate Bill uh, 1861, is principally a minimum uh, wage bill. It would raise the minimum wage for $2.25. Most of the ambulance operators in the country are paying more than that, but it's a question of the hours. Anyone in excess of eight hours would be immediately charged for a time and a half in computing all of his time. Forty hours would not be the line, eight hours would be the line. It eliminates practically all of the exemptions that have been built up over the some 20 odd years that uh, we have had a Fair Labor Standards Practice Act. We do not feel that uh, a citywide boycott of all of the children in the public school system will, uh, will help our cause, nor will it help their education. Uh, we feel that they will have enough problems that first day with simply trying to uh, overcome the uh, hardships, the burdens that the administration, the school administration has put upon them through this. The heart of the matter is the human dignity and respect accorded to black children and their parents. The matter of brainwashing all children, which is being passed off as quality education. 
and denying minority children of their motivation and will to learn and survive, damaging their attitudes and personalities without the due process of law. After 16 years, since the desegregation case which sets the law of integration because of the inherent denial of the due process of law and because of the lack of equal protection of the laws in the concept of segregation, no plan to date has called upon all concerned to follow the spirit of the law as well as what it says. Black children have been open to fears, coercions, intimidation coming from hidden prejudices of the staff members which warp their minds and spirits. No plan thus far speaks to this problem. As there seems to be just as much racism in Dallas citizenry now as it was 16 years ago, we cannot see anything short of another Little Rock situation which our children will face.